our 120 days of prayer and priest, priesthood and prophecy, fasting, intercession, and the speakings of the Lord over our lives. And the Lord instructed us that in order for us to accurately align and prepare our hearts and our spirits for that engagement, we should do a series of teachings on priesthood. Because if you read the scriptures, the Bible will tell you that wisdom is better than weapons of war. The reason wisdom is better than weapons of war is that it's not that you do not need weapons to fight in a battle. It's that your weapons will be useless without strategy. Your weapons will be useless without insight. Your weapons will be useless without wisdom. So if you've listened to me teach on spiritual warfare, I've taught you before that a, an accurate pilgrim, an accurate priest does not just jump into the arena of spiritual warfare. When you want to war in the realm of the spirit, the first thing you seek is wisdom. There are mysteries that are responsible for the things you are trying to engage in the invisible realm. And for you to be effective in war, you must be able to unravel those mysteries. So your entry point into spiritual warfare begins by seeking what is hidden. Because there are things that occur in the realm of the natural that are the product of legalities that have been secured in the invisible realm. So if you are able to identify those legalities and accurately interpret them, then it's on the basis of that wisdom you have secured that you'll be able to accurately prosecute spiritual warfare so for instance if you are praying for your family and you have noticed that there are certain patterns certain expressions that exist within your bloodline it's not just to jump into the ring and begin to say i bind and i lose what are you binding what is responsible for it have you been able to interpret the patterns the footprints of satan that exist upon that family what engineered it and this is why, like I was saying on Sunday, when David came back and he saw that his family had been taken, the first thing he needed to do was to secure wisdom. So he had to call for the priest so that they could peep into the invisible realm to find out what had been released there. That's how you wage war. Because Paul told us that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So if the battle is not against flesh and blood, then the weapons of our warfare cannot afford to be carnal. Are you with me? If your, your, your battle is not carnal, if you are not fighting human beings, then the weapons, the instruments for the battle cannot afford to be carnal. So you wage war on the basis of wisdom. This is why we are prepping ourselves. We are trying to teach so that when we begin to intercede, because there are times when we come, we are not going to even pray for ourselves. We will come on certain times, the prayers will not be um, based on our personal needs. We might come here and in the first month, all we are doing every day for 30 days is asking God to show mercy upon the territory. And this is the reason we do not have a lot of Christians moving beyond prayer into intercession. Because intercession is selfless labor, is sacrificial. But if you do not understand why intercession is important, intercession for you will be boring. It will make no meaning. It will not be attractive. You will not find the usefulness of it unless you understand why it exists. So this is why we have been burdening ourselves, drawing ourselves apart to look upon the articles of intercession. And if you follow the teaching since we began from the first part, we're in the eighth installment of this teaching. So parts one to seven are already on our Telegram channel and you can access it and study, write questions, understand what we've been teaching. If you've been here since the first part, we have told you that there is the doctrine of priesthood and then there is the practice of priesthood. And for you to be an accurate participant in the arena of priesthood, you must understand doctrine and then you must participate in practice. And when we speak about the doctrine of priesthood, we said that the doctrine of priesthood just means 
the teaching, the instruction in the way of priesthood. And it means that you have to understand what priesthood is, what it represents, because every time people think about priesthood, the first thing that comes to their mind is just prayer. Priesthood is not just prayer. Prayer is an aspect of priesthood. But the entire thing that is called priesthood is a system, a system that makes it easy for the supernatural to invade the natural, for the spiritual to invade the material, for the invisible to invade the visible. And I said that system has various elements. There is the priest, there is the altar, there is the sacrifice, and then there is the temple. It is all of this that makes up the priesthood, not just the priest and his praying. All of these elements make up the priesthood. It's now in the practice of the priesthood that you now understand the contributions of each of these elements that make up the priesthood. And we've tried to explain each of these elements over and over and over and again. As we are wrapping up now, what we want to be dealing with is the tools, the tools, the tools for each of these elements of the priesthood. And I began by showing us that for the priest, his first tool, if you've been here for the last two Wednesdays, is that he must be a man that can carry fire. So fire is one of the tools of the priest. Fire is one of the tools of the priest. If you notice in the Old Testament, because the, the system that we are operating now was modeled to us by the priesthood that God showed to us in the Old Testament. And I showed you that the first thing about the fire is that the fire must be divine. It must be divine. That means it is God that lights the fire. So when you see Jesus carry a whip and enter into the, the temple to chase away the traders, those that were buying and selling, those that were changing money, money changers. And then the Bible now quotes an Old Testament verse to say zeal for his house had done what? Consumed him. It was speaking about a fire that had been lit within his bosom. Because all you need to do is to read scriptures and you will find out that one of the metaphors that is used to describe God is fire. So one of the symbols of the manifest presence of God is fire. The Bible even says in Hebrews that God is a what? Consuming fire. When you read the book of Malachi, he tells us that he will sit as a refiner of silver. Eh? He will sit as a purifier of silver upon the house of Levi. The Bible calls him a refiner's fire and a fuller soap. So fire is God's presence. Fire is God that consumes you from the inside. Fire is still God that refines you. It refines you. So one of the primary tools of the priest is that he must be a man that knows how to one sustain the fire that is divine so once God lights the fire and one of the ways that God lights the fire in the heart of the priest is what we call spiritual summons spiritual summons how do spiritual summons happen you can receive a, a, a burden within your soul a prompting and the idea of that prompting is that God wants to use it to draw you to the place of prayer so for instance, you appear on a campus and then as you are walking past girls hostel, suddenly your heart becomes troubled. Spiritual men know how to interpret their signs. Because 80% of the communications of God are non-verbal. 80%. And I've taught you before, many Christians will die without ever hearing the audible voice of God. Many. Because the audible voice of God is not every Christian that will hear it. Most of the time when you hear a preacher say, I'm hearing the voice of God, is the spirit of God communicating with his human spirit. And sometimes it might even be the voice of his conscience. Are you with me? Hearing the audible voice of God is not uh, uh, something that will happen to every Christian, but every Christian will hear God. Every Christian will communicate with God. This is why as a believer, you must know how to interpret your signs. 
when sister faith was leading prayer she said something like you get to somewhere and god says don't enter that bus if you have become familiar familiar with with interpreting your signs loss of peace for instance is a sign uneasiness within your spirit is a sign you just find out that you are waking up every night at the same time you cannot sleep is a summon but you see what many believers do is that when they are experiencing these things rather than respond to God they pick up their mobile phones and use it to chat on WhatsApp all night to chat on WhatsApp all night so God is looking for opportunity to kindle a fire to stir you like the J Jeremiah when he stirred Jeremiah notice how he stirred Jeremiah the Bible says Jeremiah said the word of the Lord came the word of the Lord came unto me so if you look at the picture that Jeremiah is painting there it's like the word of the Lord took on the form of a human being and walked into his room it was a summon and when the word of the Lord came the word of the Lord began to speak to him on the matters of destiny after those speakings what happened next was that Jeremiah began to have visions for instance if you have a vision you do not understand it's a summon you sleep in the night, you have a vision, you don't understand it. You don't just put it under your carpet and then you say, I just prayed and I left it. Sometimes that vision is God's way of trying to light a fire, to push you on a fast for 50 days. But many Christians don't know how to respond. And the thing about that is if the fire is not divine, there is no way for the priest to make it perpetual. Because notice the Bible says, like I showed you last week, that the fire must be kept burning on the altar. If the ignition is human, humanity cannot sustain it. If you are the one generating the body by yourself, trying to fake the body, you are hearing that people are praying, so you want, you want to pray, you will just find out that you will burn out. Naturally, you will burn out. After a while, the thing will tire you. You just wake up one day and start asking yourself, so, so every day I'll just wake up and be praying for secondary schools. Oh God, secondary school. Oh, you will run out of prayer points. But what makes it easy for the priest to sustain it is that it is divinely ignited. So God stirs you. The reason it has to be divinely ignited is humanity cannot bring anything that is glorious to God. You must be aided by the Spirit of God. God doesn't want your flesh. Your flesh corrupts his matters. So what the Holy Ghost wants to do is take advantage of your obedience. I have to keep the fire burning. And then the Holy Spirit will take advantage of your obedience to now begin to execute the counsel of God through your life. That's how it works. So you will find somebody telling you that they've been praying five hours every day over the same prayer point for 10 years. They are not tired. That strength is not human. That strength is not driven. It's not, it's not something they create. It's not something they worked up. You can't fake it. I'm trying to tell you that you can't fake the fire. You can't fake the fire. And this is why many Christians seem like they like prayer, but they can't shift from prayer to become intercessors. They can't stand in the gap, even for their own family members. If they tire them to pray for their own father, tire them to pray for their children, to pray for their wives, their husband, if they tire them. In fact, many Christians ask them, they don't have prayer points for their family. They have for themselves, so for themselves. They can pray for this, pray for, but when it just enters into the arena of selfless, sacrificial praying, they lose words. They don't even have burdens to pray. It's because the fire must first be what? Divine must be ignited and all you need to do is we don't have the time i want to move into other tools tonight all you need to do is study the characteristics of fire fire has in the natural has two dimensions fire is light and fire is heat and if you look at the two altars i showed you in the temple there's the altar of the burnt offering that is outside in the outer court 
and then there's the altar of incense that is in the holy of holies um, in the inner court and into the holy of holies you will find out that the characteristics of fire are um, applicable in these two areas because fire as light does two basic things one it exposes two it reveals fire as light now these two words might have the same meaning but in application in the realm of spiritual warfare and intercession the meanings are not necessarily the same when fire as light exposes it's exposing the hidden works of darkness so things that the devil is hiding if the priest tends his fire those things become exposed when fire as light reveals is speaking about the fire of discernment so it helps you reveal the mind of god because there's a dimension of prayer where you are praying from the known to the manifestation did you hear what i said there's a dimension of prayer where you are praying from the known to the what manifestation or from the known to the fulfillment that is what we call prophetic intercession. 